Jamil here from Run Steep Get High, and today I have a new gear video for you. I've done a couple of these before, and I wanted to do an updated version after my recent ultramarathon finish at the Elephant Mountain 50 Mile in Cave Creek, Arizona. If you want to check out my experience running that race, check out the video we filmed and put together at the link below or right at the conclusion of this video. I know a few of you in the comments were curious what type of gear I was rocking that day, and today I'm going to share all of that and more. So let's get right into what I pack for a 50 mile ultra marathon. So for starters, let's talk shoes. Lately in training, I had been wearing a lot of really beat in pairs of shoes, so I decided to break out a fresh pair specifically for this race. Normally, one might break in a pair of shoes, but since I'm accustomed to them, I was able to open up a brand new pair of Solomon Sense Pro 2s I've been hoarding. This has been a go-to shoe in the past for me. Although I haven't run in a pair lately, this was perfect straight out of the box. If I had to pick another shoe for this course, it definitely would have been the Solomon Ultra Pro, but the Sense Pro 2 was a great shoe for me, providing plenty of cushion and grip for a mix of rocky and wet terrain. I may be an anomaly, but knock on wood, I rarely get blisters these days. I'm fortunate enough to be able to run in almost anything. I wore a pretty cheap pair of socks from Target that I bought in a multi-pack. I'm a fan of longer socks, and the pair I wore does come up to my lower calf. No chance of hitting my ankle, and little chance of rocks getting into my socks either. Shorts. I went with the Solomon Sense short. I believe this is last year's model. They've done a slight update, but it has a comfortable built-in liner and wrap-around mesh pockets. You can stow a phone, a wallet, gels, and more. Although I don't always stash items in here, it's nice and convenient when I need to. I also oftentimes stash used gel wrappers until I reach the next aid station. These shorts are also fairly long, which I really dig. Moving on to my top, I'm super pumped about this one. I wore a custom sublimated singlet that we made in-house with from Aravipa Artworks, which is my company's awards and printing division. This is one of our newest additions to our printing capabilities, and we had some fun with this design. We modified the race logo to create a custom Elephant Mountain one-of-a-kind 50-mile race team design and printed it on a Gildan Performance Technical Fabric race singlet. Although I did have some minor chafing from my pack on my shoulders due to the thin straps, it was worth it to represent this awesome new race and this new race logo which we launched for this year's race. Because the race started before sunrise and it was a bit cold out, I wore a thin Solomon advanced skin long sleeve from the start to mile 10, where I was able to stash it in my drop bag. I don't think I washed this since the race. With my long hair, I'm almost always rocking a hat to keep things at bay and also to give a little sun protection. I wore another piece from Aravipa Artworks, a custom camo hat from Otto featuring the new Copper Corridor logo. We'll have more details on Aravipa Artworks products soon for those interested in custom gear. For my pack, I wore a Solomid Advanced Skin 12 set pack. This is a larger 12 liter pack that I honestly probably didn't need to be this big for this race in particular, but it's just so comfortable and lightweight that I really didn't mind it. I usually wear this pack for Barkley, so it's really expandable for all kinds of distances up to 100 miles and beyond. Up front, I had two Solomon soft flasks and actually picked up a third bottle, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, for the long semi-supported 25 mile loop into the Tonto National Forest. There are zippered pouches on the front where I stashed my car keys along with some race nutrition and then a larger zippered pouch in the back for larger items like jackets and gloves, which I actually didn't need to carry in this race. Instead, I used it for some camera equipment, which I'll touch on at the end of the video. Since the race did start in the dark, I ran with the Kagala Raw Adventure Light. This has been my favorite light for all ultra distance races as it has a ton of output and puts pretty much all other headlamps to shame. The 800 lumen light has five LEDs and I like to run with mine in my hand for the ultimate use. I carried a Bat Pack 2, which is their mid-size battery pack it has 13,400 milliamp hours and plenty for me on race day. I put this part in my Solomon vest. Most 50 milers will have at least one place for a drop bag and I did utilize one on race day. In mine, I put extra gels 
some caffeine pills, Squirrel's Nut Butter for chafing, my Mavic Mini drone, some Kinesio tape, and a LifeStraw Flex collapsible squeeze bottle. I carried the LifeStraw Flex bottle for the northern part of the loop of the race where it had a 12 and 14 mile stretch with no aid, but plentiful stream crossings. Not only was it additional carrying capacity for water, but if I needed to, I could have dipped into a stream. I'd be able to drink right from this filtered straw right here, directly from, from the bottle. This is a great option for backcountry adventures and something you may not want to run without for longer races. I didn't need to dip into creeks this time, but I had it just in case. Other gear I used for my drop bag includes Squirrel's Nut Butter that I applied at mile 10 for anti-chafe, which worked great. I did put a strip of Kinesio tape on each ankle on race morning. It helped to give me a little bit of stability since I'd been dealing with a little bit of an ankle injury. Nutrition wise, I ate some gels in between aid stations. I ate a chickpea sandwich at mile 10 and 35, hummus and avocado roll-ups at mile 25, bean burritos and potatoes at almost every station, and wrapped up the event with a pizza at the finish line. Due to little sleep race week, no surprise, I also consumed a one 200 milligram caffeine pill. I used those sparingly, but it did make me more alert and able to keep pushing all day. Finally, for those of you interested in my camera equipment, and I know not all of you geek out on that stuff, I filmed most of the race with a GoPro Hero 8 in 4K mode with their Max Hyper Smooth Stability Control on. I had just one single battery and this little tripod right here, which lasted most of the day, but I wish I had packed one more. I made it about 35 miles before it died on me. I had to use my phone for a couple videos towards the end, but missed that sweet, sweet finish. I also picked up my Mavic Mini drone and controller from my drop bag at mile 10. So yes, I ran half the race with a drone in my back compartment of my race vest, but they're getting so small and lightweight these days that it wasn't really that big of a deal. I was able to make four flights off of a single battery, averaging about three minutes per flight for some amazing aerial footage to splice into the race video. I won't always do this and wouldn't always recommend it. Uh, make sure you follow your local laws, but the run was just for training and I was glad to get the footage. Well, that wraps up this gear video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you have any questions about what I ran with, please comment. And if you like this video and would like to see more like it, please drop a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our latest uploads. And again, thanks for tuning in.